your reference images ready because now we're getting into the details and the decisions that we have to make. And I would like for you to notice the shapes of the wren. Um, for example, the top of his head is really flat and it makes um, kind of a triangle off of the beak. So we're going for that, like the beak is long and skinny and then the head just kind of comes out off of it. I'm gonna use core and a couple of top coat colors to make a piece, a triangle for the top of the head. And then I'm gonna do another triangle in Serafina white underneath the chin. I think I use brown about an inch and a half square of brown. So I just kind of restacked that to make it make it a nice size. Since it's getting a little top coat on it, I'm just stretching it out. I've stretched it out to like a thinner two inch, two inch square. And you can look through your stash. I, in my notes, I wrote to mix the rust and the chestnut um, on top of the head. So I've got, I'm sorry, rust and cinnamon, which is the core. Oh no, this, sorry, the chestnut. We don't need that cinnamon core. But you have a lot of options of, of things to mix. So, but basically we want the top of the head to be this chestnutty color and the brown core will come through a little bit. So I'm restacking, I'm just pulling the ends to kind of um, blend the fiber together. Pull it and restack and pull it and restack. You could use your hand carters if you have them. I had a little bit more chestnut. But we'll use a little bit of this on the tail as well. So it's okay if you have extra. And slightly more still. The chestnut is such a muted kind of nut brown. It really tones down the red of the rust merino. Okay, we wanna take a section of that. And when you do take a smaller section, it might be easier than to blend that some more because you're not working with as much. I'm just trying to break up this one spot of merino I have here. All right. So I'm gonna lay that over the core and then felt a triangle. And I want the triangle to have a little, like a quarter inch at the top of it, like not super pointy. Whoops, I forgot to turn it over. Rookie mistake <laughs> number seven. Turn it over so your pretty fibers on the bottom. And what happens is the brown core just stabs through and tones down um, the chestnut a little bit. So my triangle is nice and wide. So what, what bird does not need a comb? I don't know what. Uh, a bald eagle. <laughs> We're technically in like the hair portion. What's going to happen when we make eagles and... I don't know. There's no, there's <laughs> nothing eagle. So I'm just kind of stretching this out and fussing with it a little bit. Teasing some of the edge fiber loose. Um, so that I can blend it together. But I want the tip of the triangle to come to the back of the beak 
and just go around it slightly. That's why I didn't make it super pointy because I want it to, this edge to be able to go around the beak a little bit. And then I wanna felt the back of the head flat. And then the rest of this just comes onto the bird. You know, all the little color changes and everything else, it needs, um, we're gonna keep finessing. So I don't worry too much about where this fringe goes. I mean, you don't wanna like wrap it down here because this stays, <clears throat> stays um, golden. We're going to make the wings next so that they're in place so we can start to see, um, you know, what needs to go where. So for the wings, I like to use the cinnamon and the brown core because I want to have like a little bit more, it just gives a little more variation to have the brown at the tip. So to make two, two inch on the thinner side, cause it's getting more and top coat. And then let's take a inch of brown, split it in half and put that at the tip of each wing. And then take our blend and just put a thin layer over each of those. So you want them to look the same. And then flip those over, which I neglected to do on the other one. And I'm gonna make a triangle. You know, Milo, your description said rounded wings. Let's see what it's short says. round wings, but everything I see short round wings and a short is a little narrow more tail pointy. All right, well, we'll just round the triangle a little bit so it's not cool. so pointy at the end. They're very rounded at the part where it attaches to the body. Definitely, yes. We got to keep you busy, John. <laughs> I'm worried about everybody being busy this summer. Okay, good. We're just joking about how much editing the video is going to involve today. Once you've made your triangle, then you can kind of shape, like I feel like they curve up a little bit. So flatter on the top and then a little more curved on the bottom. So then you can kind of shape it. So if this one's going on the bird's right, then this one. I wanna go on the left this way. I see pointy wings kind of on the one end, but the tail's definitely squared off. The tail is, yeah, is squared off. Now, I think it's easier to put a little bit of detail on the wing before you put it onto the bird. I mean, uh, like, as I said before, there's so much you can do here. I think you guys, you know, can, can spend a little more time than I will, um, but, even pressing these, I think, to get them nice and flat hmm. would really look really nice because part of what would make them look feathery and wing-like would be to get these edges really nice and pressed flat. You could try trimming it. Um, there's tons of possibilities. I'm gonna take a really thin strip of coffee and make a little line as if, um, as if there was a shadow from one feather overlapping the other. And again, make sure you lift periodically to get, get your uh, piece unembedded. Mm -hmm. 
once our uh, feather tutorial is out, which depending on when you're watching this, it will be, you could even play with mini, mini, tiny mini. feathers. Not something I wanted to get into for this because it's so small, but um, you know, you could just, you could combine techniques and elaborate on on what I'm doing here. Then they have um, little, you can either put little dots or tiny stripes. Um, Some of them just, have so much. Little. Just on the edge here. I think I'm gonna use off-white. I don't feel like it's like white, white. I don't know what. I think three or five is a nice number of something in um, a little detail like this. But I'm sure you guys will Look at your references and make make good decisions. My information says the dominating colors of their plumage is generally drab. <laughs> oh, it's funny. It's not drab. It's not. It's not a bright color. I mean, yeah. Well, ground it, gray. It's not brown, a primary black. color. Yeah. But I don't think drab compared to some birds. I, I think guess. they're really striking with the um, the white, gold, and brown, and the contrast. Um, Most of the species white. show some barring. Is that the striping? That's this is the yeah, little variation, um, even in the browns. This also says they're usually solitary, sometimes in pairs. Huh. All right, I hope I did these right. Where's my bird? Oh, here it is. So, so tweet. Okay, it looks to me as if the wing just comes past the butt. And then the fringe, you kind of want to build a little bit of a shoulder here. And from the side, you're gonna see a little bit of this golden belly. And if you need to, you can manipulate this more. You know, you can pull fiber off this end, you can stretch it out, you can twist and turn it. Let's make our t um, little chin. Well, before I put the white chin on, I want to shingle up from the belly up towards the head. And I want to use autumn gold. And I'm going to use autumn gold straight up. <laughs> straight up autumn gold at the bottom and then maybe mix in a little dune as they come towards the top. So shingling is you let the first um, third of the fiber, I'm pointing it towards the butt, towards the tail, and then I'm felting the center third, and then I'm folding the top third back. 
kind of felting that down. So I'm going to do that again, and then I'm going to mix a little bit of Dune together with it just to change the color slightly. So this time, I want the first third of the fiber to overlap that fold and cover it up. And then I felt the center third. I do fold the felt the first third down a little bit as well. And then I fold this over and felt that down. The shingling is a whole lot easier than making individual feathers. <laughs> yeah, and on yeah, there's oh, there's so many so many ways to manipulate the fiber into what you want, you know. When I blend my this is Romney and my um merino, I'm going to cut this in half. It's a little bit long for a bird this size. It was fine doing what I was just doing because I needed to cover some ground. But now that I'm getting into some detail, I'm going to cut this fiber in half. And then that's what I'll use to blend with the merino. So I'm going to do smaller sections. I'm not going to tackle all of this at once, but So now the merino looks a little bit longer than the Romney, but it'll break down as I blend it together. This makes like a softer, lighter color. Okay, then we're gonna use little sections of this. And get a little farther up here. I'm gonna go under the wing here. Just felting the center of this up under where the wing is gonna cover it so you won't see the fold. And letting the fringe meet what I with what I just put on the belly. Blending is really, you know, a great skill to get get on your tool belt, especially like understanding color and texture and why you're blending them together. But it opens up a whole new realm of possibility for your sculptures once you start to see how you can, how you can use the colors you have by mixing them together. The blends also look more realistic. I think so too. I, you know, the very first things I made were very, um, elementary in that way. Like I was just using the wool. And so they're sort of like block one color. Yeah, yeah. Like almost like a, um, color blocking, <laughs> like, like on a Fox legs are black, bodies reddish Brown faces. What, you know what I mean? Like there was no, uh, subtlety to it or complexity. And all along, even though now we're developing more feather techniques, I've always felt that fiber mimics feathers really well. It's pretty amazing. So I was telling, just telling Kyla and John, I just watched um, my octopus teacher on Netflix and um, the color was, was incredible and the octopus itself and what it does with its color is incredible. Oh. So it really made me want to make one. Um, but it's sort of like, how would you, they just change and they change their texture too. They, oh. they can give themselves like horns on its head what? or make it look spiky or make it look, yeah. Wow. So incredible. That, a living being. That's like it's a, a superpower. Power, power. Yeah. exactly. 
taking this lighter blend um, on the chest as well. And then once we have this shingle in place, then we'll do our white. So layering like this and shingling like this gives you this nice fringy, um, realistic lay of the of the fibers. Um, so it looks looks like there's more going on than just a direct felting technique, which would be to take more of the wheat and <laughs> just you know felt a color on directly. So once I get this a little farther along, I can decide, you know, how much do I want all of these little edges to be felted down and where do they go and that stuff. So I need to really fill this in. I think I'm actually going to put, speaking of filling it in, just a really little, I didn't do this on the other ones, but I see how I need it. I'm just going to put a little pillow here before I put my triangle so that it um, doesn't have as much work to do. Sometimes the way that you make something um, changes. So now I can put the triangle and it doesn't, it, like if I put the triangle without that, it would have just gone into that dip. So using the Serafina white, whoops, that was my off-white core. I'm gonna get about an inch and a half, try to get it consistent. Draw my arrow and then fold the fiber in and you're gonna get your triangle. I don't have to super felt this because it's gonna get felted on. Okay. Oh my gosh. So I'm looking at these pictures and the white almost comes straight down. I mean, obviously it has to do with the position of the bird, but it's not angled real tight back like this. It almost comes, it almost rounds out so much that it comes kind of straight, straight down from the beak. So I'm gonna try and leave that feature I gotta get some of this extra fluff off of here. There we go. So don't squeeze it super don't, tight. Yeah, yeah. So my, my little triangle could like, that little pillow I put in definitely is gonna help that. And then on mine, I have um, where this is where the eye is going to go, where the head triangle kind of meets this triangle. But I do want to put a little more fiber here. And I think I'm going to do that with um, a Serafina white little um, fold here. So I'm just going to take the white. I'm going to put the center of it in this void where the eye is going to go and then fold it down and just kind of fill this space in a little bit more before I put the eye and stuff on. I wish so many pictures, of like I'm looking at pictures and, and, and so many of them are in you know profile. Mm. And so something from above would be really helpful. And I'm sure if I did enough searching, I could find it. But so I'm stabbing the center of this little section of Serafina white into this where the two uh, shapes are meeting and then I'm folding the top down. And that actually also helps keep this little throat nice and nice and full. All right, now let's do the tail and then it will be all about the details. First, we're going to tail 
and then we will detail. <laughs> you know, my friend was using a lot of bird puns, then I realized two can play at this game. <laughs> The tail I'm going to make as I did the wing with a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of brown and then a little bit of our that initial blend that we made on top. My notes say that there are 88 species. Why did these guys wren? have such brown tails? Wow, that's amazing. It feels like, like a lot. Like what fiber am I not using here? All right. And then the shape is long. Okay, let me give you let me back up and give you some dimensions here. About 2 inches wide and about 3 inches long and all the fibers are going across. And then this shape, we're going for about three inches, but you wanna fold the end of the tail over and then make an ever so slightly fan shape. And then this gets folded over, and then this gets folded over. Yeah, that's amazing. 88, Yeah. and how did, people figure that out that's a lot of bird watching keeping the keeping the ornithologists busy was that the right word i, I don't yes. even know <laughs> my laptop in your way no i'm good <laughs> i like when you watch what i do and help me rectify my Position and decisions. Well, up a big vocabulary. I try. <laughs> and then I question it. <laughs> and then we have more editing to do. <laughs> I like using my vocabulary when I write because I have time. Double check it. To double check it. The tail details mm -hmm. <laughs> can be a little bit of the uh, coffee. I feel like they have a little that barring. I'm just going to make some little stripes. That barring that we discussed. Maybe a little bit of off white on the edges. This is where you guys can really sink into it and where I scoot along because I'm making a video. See, like that was a bad idea. <laughs> Must to stab each stripe, Sarah. Did you know the wren in Greek legend was king of the birds? That's awesome. I didn't know that. Well, the wren hid on the eagle's back and Ooh. then became, succeeded in flying higher in the sky yeah. than the eagle. So the highest of any bird. That's tricky. That also reminds me of the documentary about the octopus. Oh, do I spoil it? I don't know. You maybe shouldn't. Let me just put it this way. She's very, very smart and outsmarted a shark. Well, that's all oh, I'll say. Oh, nice. Does it follow one? Yeah, one. How'd they do that? And that that's part of why it's so amazing is because this person, this one man. Oh, that stresses me out. Like that's what he did. Like in scuba gear? Yeah, uh, no, snorkeling. 
he didn't want a wetsuit and he didn't want the gear because he was in a kelp forest. Oh. <laughs> this remark, I mean, it's just, it's, what's the right word? Remarkable. Like on so many levels mm. that the, how it was made, who this person is, the, you know, the footage he filmed. Um, I don't like swimming in a lake because I know there might be fish in there. <laughs> I mean, no mites. You know they're in there and they might like nibble your toes. <laughs> you are one with nature. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I wonder what it would be like to cut the edge of this. I'm going to try it on this. I'm going to experiment <laughs> on our tutorial. I just feel like it would look a little more feather-like to have instead of a folded edge. Yeah, like it's going to show what's inside and look a little more. Okay, this we want to be supported by our little our little butt. Here. <laughs> Probably maybe should have gone on before the wings. So I'm just going to lift the wings up, get that underneath there. If you're watching this tutorial through before you start, <laughs> you could make your, no you your could own make note. your tail first. This is good. This is good. So you, we can use our, we can make a little lighter blend with the Merino and the Autumn Gold and put a little poof on his butt bone here. So kind of under this shingle, I want to get another couple of shingles going, well, let's go in the same direction with ends towards the tail. We'll see if we need one or two. Probably good. I'll felt this down. There's actually a Wren proverb. Yay! Irish proverb. The nest is enough for a wren. Hmm. I'm going to mix Dune and Serafina White and get this little shoulder area. The nest is enough for the wren. Is that it? Yeah. They're just content little things. All they need is their little nest. That's how I take it anyway. Mm -hmm. Probably should have printed a couple of these out. It doesn't go, it just goes, you just have a blonde shoulder just above the wing. So that's what I'm working on. And I might reverse needle this a little bit to, to blend it. 
because I'm doing a direct felting technique instead of a shingle. So it looks a little, looks a little chunky on top, you know, on top of all this lovely fluff that we have going on. Oh, that's getting sweet. Okay, a couple of face details. We definitely need the black. You have a small amount of black in your kit because the only thing that's for is the eyes. So I just take a thin strip and roll it up. Try to make, um, try to roll it into a sphere as much as possible, or at least a round shape. Um, it might not be as three-dimensional as a sphere, but you definitely want a round shape. And then we want it to go back from the edge of the beak, and it's gonna rest in between this chestnut and white. And I'm gonna stab at the edges to really keep it round and get it, don't let it sprawl, don't let it get alien-like um, by letting it become almond shape. just keep it round. And it looks a little large at the moment, but it's gonna get rimmed, which will make it make it look smaller. Really like their markings. So their beak comes back onto their face a little bit. So check from the top and the front <laughs> that you're um, that you're symmetrical here. So to make the beak look like it's extending onto his little head, we're gonna take some carob and do just that. And I might tease this out a little farther. Let that reach forward just a little bit. So on this one, you can see I took the carob and I worked into the beak and just turned down a corner under the eye. So we need a little fringe on each side And I think it's good to like roll it into a line. Let this blend with the beak. And it comes, it ends just, just where the eye starts. So you don't want it to come too far back or he'll look weird. And you might be stabbing into the swax a tiny bit, but your needle shouldn't be too unhappy about that. So this is like the corners of his mouth. The beak doesn't end right where our swax part ends. It comes into his head a little bit. And I'm always checking my shape against um, against my reference image. So the other thing that they have going on is um, a dark rim off their eye and then a white stripe over their eye. So for the dark rim, I'm gonna use, do I have any more of that? I have a little bit of our original blend left, but I'm gonna blend it with brown. 
So this is um, rust, chestnut, and brown. Brown, brown, core. brown core. Yeah, I'm just taking it a little darker than the rust and chestnut. Kind of matches what's happening at the end of the wing and tail tip. And it's such a small amount, so take your time to get it well blended. And then it comes right off the back of the black eye. And goes towards the wing. In some cases, meeting with it, and in some cases, you still have a little bit of this blonde. So just look at your picture and you decide what you want to do there. I'm so bad at doing the right side. I always have to turn it upside down. There's like a hundred times more black than you need in the kit. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm noticing we will add some. Oh, okay. Yeah, because not, qu not quite enough of that for two. Okay. So yeah, our kit, our, our tutorials, tutorials are usually our final um, kit work through. Then the Serafina White is going to go over the eye and above this black, this dark, uh, stripe that we just added. That's your like your Carolina Wren signature. Yeah. So cool. And this is when you also start talking to him, telling him how tweet he is, how you want him to soar. It builds them up, really. Mm -hmm. It's important. One thing I keep doing is um, flattening the head out. So I make sure to, uh, to look at it, but also to come at it from the top. Because we really didn't build the head flat other than putting the triangle on and using it um, to, do, you know, to do that. You could always add a little more <clears throat> white under here if you feel like this is, if it's cutting back too much and you want to fluff it out, you could add more white. You could add another shingle of um, of the autumn gold. I like this one. I feel like I got um, the shape pretty well in this one. So the last details are a little white dot in the eye, which we definitely want. And then if you have a reverse needle, will you pass me the needle? Um, yeah, that just passed me the whole needle thing. If you have reverse needles, I keep a pen tool with two and I just marked it with a piece of tape so that I know it's my reverse needle. You could disrupt, they have a little bit of a kind of mist color in this white around their head. So you can disrupt this a little bit, pull some of that, um, wheat out, pull some of that carob that's in there, and then just stab it back in. And that's kind of fun and makes a little, little more realism. I like to rim the eye. It's, it, they do have a lid, so it sets the eye apart. I think I'll use carob for that in this case. And I'll just really spin a thin a thin bit of carob in my fingers and just stab it around the black eye. 
it incorporates it and helps it look a little less um, jarring. And then um, with the Serafina White, the Serafina White is great. It's really white this time. Oh boy. Uh, then you want definitely want a little white dot in the eye because that makes them look alive because it's it indicates um, the roundness and the moisture and um, some light. I had mentioned using reverse needles here, which I think I'll do um, to pull this wheat and white together here. You can leave them fuzzy, but it's nice to stab it. You can also stab it back in. And I could use the reverse needle along the back here a little bit because we have that brown underneath and we also have all these shapes overlapping. So breaking that apart a little bit Oh, you know what else is cool? Do you see the um, claw in there? Oh, I see it, I got it. This is kind of a cool tool um, that we carry for, um, for pulling fiber together as well. Hmm. So especially if you were to reverse needle, pull some fiber out. And then use this to you know, tease it into a, into a direction. That's a, kind of a fun way to go. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Make sure you get his tail sticking back up. So I've worked on my left side, but I haven't worked on my right side. Put the rim on the eye and the little white dot, and then I'm gonna call him Home Tweet. The reverse needle and that claw really make a difference. Yeah, it's fun to keep finding ways to um manipulate the fiber you know like that's like a little little tweak but a little tweak, tweak. <laughs> oh his poor feet i know he's gonna need a little shaping it helps um them stand actually to curl the toes a tiny bit which i think is interesting When I put the white dot, you gotta make sure it's small. And if you just stab in the same place over and over, it'll do what it needs to do. There we go. So we finished, we made, I think I made the best wren yet in terms of shape. It's so funny cause like every critter has 
its characteristics that you're trying to determine and then interpret and then show. So I have made several, it usually takes me three, <laughs> three or so as with the hounds, like I just had to keep making them. Um, but this is, this is the one we made today. And I feel as if the shape, the shape of the beak, the proportions, um, the shape of the head in particular is the tricky part for me. So I feel like it, it, we did well. He's a handsome little guy. Whoops, stand up, dude. I always like to just put my fingers on their feet and then tweak them until you find that balance. Tweet, tweet them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, and I hope that you will share what you make in our group on Facebook, which is Serafina Felting Fanfare. And I also hope you will subscribe to our channel. We put out new videos often, and you will be sure to stay um, informed if you subscribe. What else do we need to say? Uh, on, also on Facebook, I asked you and then I figured it out. Also on Facebook, um, our business page is Serafina Fiber Art, same name as our website. So following that is great because we use, um, we use that page to share the important things that are coming, as well as our newsletter, yes. which you can sign up for on our website. Yep, main page near the bottom. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Bye.